Ginger. This fragrant and spicy rhizome flavors everything from curries and masala chai to cakes, and even those teeny tiny houses dusted with icing sugar around Christmas time. Much like tonic water, ginger found its way behind the bar as a kind of everyday preventative medicine in the form of ginger ale and beer. It's been part of the bar world for a very long time, and it was touted that ginger ale was an efficient relief for an upset stomach for many, many years. Think of ginger ale as the quieter and more easygoing sibling of the rather fiery and boisterous ginger beer. Ginger ale is generally what we use for spirit mixes, and it was what will be expected when ordering something like a whiskey ginger, for example. In 1930, Greta Garbo's very first words on film were, Give me a whiskey, ginger ale on his side, and don't be stingy, baby. To which the bartender rather sarcastically replies, Well, shall I serve it in a pail? And Garbo retorts, well that suits me down to the ground. Ginger has cemented itself into cocktail culture. Without it, the likes of the Dark and Stormy, the Moscow Mule, and the Penicillin just simply would not exist. Ginger tends to be very overpowering in cocktails, but there's no reason to shy away from it. Ginger is great, and it makes great cocktails. Just like every week, I break my drinks down into three sections. Super simple, where no special tools are required. Mega tasty, where a simple infusion or syrup is needed. And ultra fancy, where maximum effort is required. But before I can make any drinks, I gotta do some prep. Okay, so this recipe takes a little while, about two weeks, but it is well worth it. This is a naturally fermented, old school ginger beer that is packed full of good microbes, as well as delicious lactic acid. Start by making a ginger bug. Think of this kind of like a sourdough starter. Add to a large jar 25 grams of ginger. The fresher, the better. Unwashed and organic if you can. Chopped as fine as possible with the skin on. That's where those amazing wee micro beasties live that we're gonna nurture into bubbly life. Add 250 grams of spring water to your jar. Add in your chopped ginger and 25 grams of caster sugar. Stir thoroughly so that the sugar has fully dissolved, and that's it. Leave it covered at room temperature, and then every 24 hours add another 10 grams of chopped ginger and 10 grams of sugar. Then give the whole lot a quick swizz. Repeat this process of ginger sugar swizz for seven to 10 days until it's super active and bubbly. Whilst I'm waiting for my bug to spring to life, I'll make a drink. So the first cocktail is a golfer's favorite. The good old whiskey mac is something that fills hip flasks and lifts spirits around the 12th green slump. It's been warming the cockles of golfers for the past 100 years at least. It's mega easy to make and uses a pretty esoteric but distinctly British ingredient. Start by adding to a rocks glass 40 ml of Nika coffee grain. Shock horror, it's not scotch. It is, however, a great example of a bright and zesty light Highland style. 20 ml of green ginger wine. This is a currant-based wine flavored with ginger. It's been around since the 1700s and is interesting. Definitely worth trying if you haven't already, but don't expect too much. Two ingredients, that's it. Stir these together over a large ice cube and garnish with a large lemon zest. Sip and enjoy on cold, wet days or in between the 12th green and the 13th tea. Definitely warming and surprisingly complex. The Whiskey Mac. Cheers. So back in the prep kitchen, I'm about to make an absolute staple of any bar. A decent, punchy ginger syrup. There are a few ways to do this, but by far the easiest is to use a rotary or centrifugal juicer. But be sure to wear a face mask if you value your lungs and throat. Strip as much of the skin off the ginger as possible. Don't worry about getting every last bit. Chop into rough chunks and pass through the juicer. Then pass this liquid through a few fine sieves until it's relatively free of fibers. Then take 90 grams of that spicy root ginger juice. If you've juiced extra, you can keep that aside for our ginger beer later on. And to that juice, add 120 grams of caster sugar. Stir all this together until the sugar has completely dissolved and then bottle, label and store in the fridge until needed. Which is now. So cocktail number two is 100% my favorite drink in existence. I love it. 
It's a house riff on a classic and undeniably delicious 1920s rosy banger. This drink is guaranteed to put a smile on your face. Start by adding to a jar or shaker two whole fresh raspberries. Save one for a garnish later. Okay, three whole fresh raspberries. 25 mils of lime juice, 50 mils of Porter's Tropical Old Tom, which is flavored with passion fruit, guava, and white tea. 10 mils of gum, and 10 mils of ginger syrup. Shake super hard until frosty and thoroughly combined. Then fine strain a small amount into the bottom of an iced highball glass. Splash over about 50 mils of your favorite ginger ale and then top up with the rest of the cocktail. Garnish with the lime cheek and that raspberry that you saved from earlier. This is soft yet spicy, fruity and fizzy. This thing has it all. Cheers. Also, pink drinks. <laughs> Now, so coming back to my little guy after about 10 days, you can see that this thing is pretty lively. It smells a little boozy and a little sour. That means this guy is ready. Strain out the solids and keep the liquid. If you don't end up using all of this, keep some back in the fridge to kickstart your next batch. I'm gonna make one liter of killer ginger beer, but you can scale this up however much you want. Add to a large mixing bowl. 200 grams of our ginger bug, 100 grams of fresh ginger juice from a centrifugal or rotary juicer, 250 grams of caster sugar, 400 grams of bottled water, and 100 grams of fresh strained lemon juice. Stir this together for at least 10 minutes to make sure all the sugar is completely combined and then decant out into a few flip top bottles. It's about to get really fizzy. You can use plastic bottles if you want, but don't use anything that isn't designed for carbonation. Make sure to leave enough headroom in the bottles to allow for carbonation. Usually leave about one sixth of the total volume. Seal the bottles and then leave this to ferment again at room temperature for two days. But this time, burp the bottles every 12 hours or so by just opening and closing them again. After two days at room temperature, transfer to the fridge for a further two days, and then finally, the ginger beer is ready to use. This stuff is absolutely delicious as it is, but I have a killer recipe in mind for this. All right, so the last drink today is a twist on the classic Dark and Stormy. It's one of those drinks that I think everyone has had, but this is leveled up. Start by adding to a jar or shaker 25 mils of fresh lime juice, 15 mils of gum, which is a heavyweight two to one sugar syrup, five mils of your favorite peach liqueur, five mils of chinar, which is a bitter artichoke liqueur. It's totally underrated in my book. 45 mils of Diplomatico Exclusiva Reserva, which is a delightful Venezuelan aged rum. Two big dashes of Angostura bitters. Add ice and shake hard until absolutely homogenous and frosty, then fine strain a splash into an iced highball glass. Now crack out the ginger beer from the fridge, and this is the moment of truth. Two weeks in the making, will it pop? Wow. That was violent. A little too lively, perhaps. Wow. Wow. After I've cleared up my mess, add a good glug of ginger beer on top and then top up with the rest of the cocktail. Garnish with a nice mint sprig and a lime cheek. This thing is hella delicious. It's bold and spicy with a lift of juicy fruit and a lick of bitterness. And the bright fieriness of raw ginger has mellowed out somewhat into a lingering heat. It's awesome. It's the Tonto Mule. Cheers. There you go team, three cocktails using the delightfully spicy rhizome ginger. I realize it's not for everyone, but um, the ginger beer that we made in this episode is one of the best things I've ever done. Um, it's really amazing because you're actually seeing kind of microbial activity at work. You're kind of nurturing it into a state where you can drink it and it becomes really delicious and amazing. Um, I've, I've had a raspberry ginger beer made this way before and that was really, really good. Last year I made a banana ginger beer, which was interesting. I wouldn't say it was good, but it was interesting, but well worth looking into again. Um, but if you haven't done any kind of fermentation this way, this is a really cool thing to start with because you can kind of, 
you can gauge how it's going and it takes a little while and you kind of nurture it and coax it into the state that it needs to be. Anyway, if you did like what you saw, give us a thumbs up, put a comment down below with the most interesting thing that you have tried all year. And if you haven't subscribed already, my face will pop up here in a second. Give that a little click and you'll stay informed for when new videos drop every week. Until next time, take it easy, be good, love you, bye.